Hi, it's Gadget UK here. Um, just a short video on assembly of one of these um, Commodore 64 Easy Flash uh, version 3 cartridges. So, uh, as you can see, I've got the kit here. Um, nothing particularly exciting. Um, if you've done a lot of soldering stuff yourself before, you may as well just skip past this video. There's not going to be anything interesting at all, really. Unless you want to see perhaps uh, how these things, uh, what components and things are on these. But it um, should be pretty straightforward. Just a whole bunch of sockets, some caps, resistors, uh, a couple of uh, PLCC um, programmable chips there. Um, they're not EEPROMs, they're um, flash proms, you know, uh, EE proms, I think. A um, couple of resistor networks there, some caps, LEDs, 74 logic chips, uh, I think there's a 7400, 7402, 7175, uh, a 174, I think, I'm not sure. Yeah, 174. A couple of switches, a couple of buttons, rather, switching a button. Um, is that an SRAM? Yeah, it looks like it is. 43256 um, SRAM. 4K or something, or 8K, which 2K perhaps. Um, and obviously the casing, a couple of resistors, screw. Uh, is that a wire? Yeah, there must be a wire link as well, so we've got a wire there. Um, a nice label there. I like the colour of this car, it's, it's quite cool. Um, and if you're not familiar, these um, Easy Flash cars for the Commodore 64, it just allows you to. Um, well, as it says, easily program um, with the car images. You can take the C.CRT images that you use in emulators. Um, and I think there's enough space. Uh, I forget, it's probably something like one meg. What this, let's have a look at these chips, just see what they are. Um, can't even read that. Yeah, it's 29F040, so memory serves that 512K and it's in the EEPROM. So they're erasable um, via software, you know, by programming. Um, so, um, yeah, 5, 512k, so you've got a meg there, so and I think the way it works is you can have, um, uh, if, again, if I remember from the website, it says that you can have eight kernel images and eight ROM images, so. Um, you know, out of each of those 512k, I guess the kernel goes on one side and the uh, you, you gain, or whatever it is, goes on the, uh, the other. Um, so I guess you could probably fit a 512k game on there, something like Last Ninja 2 or 3 or whatever is Remix. I've actually, incidentally, I've, and I'm going to get it down uh, perhaps at the weekend, but I've got a couple of cards from when I had a Commodore 64. Um, I've got uh, Last Ninja um, 3, and I think I've got, what's it called, uh, Navy Seals. So, uh, yeah, it be interesting to dig those out and see if those work. Um, I'm waiting for Commodore 64 to arrive um, over the next few days. So, uh, it's a bit preemptive this, you know, obviously I haven't even got the machine yet, but um, yeah, this cart came pretty quick here from uh, eBay, it's well worth uh, getting one of these kits if you, you know, want to save a little bit of money and stuff, but I guess it's going to be pretty fun really just to send one of this, it won't take long to do. Um, I'll just show you something else as well, while we're some of these carts. Um, as you can see I've got a C64, and another original C64 cart here as well. Um, there you go, you can see the PCB for that, that's uh, rat, r Radar Rat Race. Um, it doesn't look, it's not a particularly exciting game, the reason I got this car, I wanted to make a diagnostics car. Um, and, you know, I did have concerns about the size of the, the I, I looked up before I ordered this, it was only a few pounds, but I looked at the size of the uh, image that's on here, it's 8K. Um, and as a result of that, obviously, you've not got all, I forget which side it is, I think it's this side. Um, some of the upper address lines are missing off this particular board because it's just designed for 8K um, chips. So uh, I think the diagnostics image is somewhere like 16K. So there's no way without you know uh, finding some way of sticking a trace on there, which is just, just not going to happen. I'd have to get a new board really, or design a new board. Um, that wouldn't work, so um, I had to scrap that idea. So, but I will convert this into another 8K car because uh, I think uh, radar rat race uh, is not much fun really. Um, I'll have a think about that. I might just reassemble it and keep it. It might be a bit sacrilege really to destroy it. The idea was was to use an EEPROM on there. Um, it's got, I think this is four times the size, so this is a uh, 32k EEPROM. And I was going to have the diagnostics on one side and another game on the other, just have a switch to toggle between the two. But since that, as I mentioned, the connections are missing off the bottom of there for the upper dress lines. Can't go beyond 8k anywhere, I don't think. 
so uh, hence that's why I decided to look for alternatives and found this uh, flash cart. And these are about £25, so yeah, you know, they're a bit costly for what they are. You could probably buy a Commodore 64 for £25, but um, it's pretty powerful in the sense that you know, you've got all of these different slots, you can have different kernel revisions. So I'm thinking about putting something like Jiffy, Jiffy DOS on there so that it, you know, uh, floppy access is a bit faster and stuff. Um, anyway, I'll uh, make a start on this now. Start with a wire link. My hands probably not quite hot enough here actually. Just the last few components now, I'm just going to assemble the switch as you can see they're all sockets and things are on, resistors, caps, uh, wire link, resistor, that works. Not sure how but I've got a missing capacitor on here, um, let's see if I can show you that position there. I've counted there's supposed to be eight and I've got seven, so definitely not, I've not lost one myself, it's just didn't come shit with it. We're only 100 nanofarads. So I've got some of those, I'll 
here from the bright components, so I'll stick one of those on there. There you go. So there. Okay, pretty much all done now. I've just got the label to stick on the uh, case and to screw things together. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to clean the underneath of this uh, PCB with some isopop. There we go. Job done, so you can see, got some pretty even solder points and things on there. It's looking good. Um, the board's looking pretty tidy there. So I'll get that fitted in the case now. Now luckily these cases already have the holes cut out, and you can see there. There isn't one for the LED, but because it's transparent, the LED's gonna shine through anyway, so I don't really need to worry about routing that, but the main thing is because those holes are cut out, you can't really get this around the wrong way. It can only go, um, it can only fit one way inside the case. Uh, there we go. Hold on. Word of warning. Um, they're pretty tight. These, like you can see, this. It's you know, it barely fits in there. It's the stuff on the sockets protrude, um, and even though you've got it as low as you know, as flat as possible, um, it still makes contact with the lid on the inside. Doesn't matter which way on the cases either. So these cases are a bit badly designed, really, like regards with the board layout. But um, yeah, that should work. It should hopefully uh, just slide in there. Okay, so I've got that cart assembled. Um, Put a bunch of gains on there, and it's worth mentioning, you know, what I had to do to do this. The, the, this Easy Flash, um, the, the you know the kit form that I bought off eBay. It's the version without the CPLD, it's the original Easy Flash. It's not Easy Flash for version three, um, which means that you don't have the CPLD on there. And as a result of that, there's certain limitations. You can't um, when you're using the Easy Prog software, the program software um, on the 64. You can pick one CRT image, one cartridge image. And that's it, it writes it to the cart, and that's it, you're done. Every time you write a new cart image, it overwrites the original one. Um, you can't select the slots on there like you can on an Easy Flash 3. Um, but what you can do is there's some, there's some software, and I'll put a link to it in the description to this video, uh, that you can use to build a cartridge image out of multiple carts, as you can see I've done here. So you use that on a PC, um, and you just go away and select your CRTs and it adds them all into the list one by one. There's a limitation on certain, some, some cartridge types, you know, I think there's only, you can only have one ocean loader type game at the same time, so if you had, uh, say you had Last Ninja 3 or something on here, or Last Ninja 1 or 2, you'll find you can't put another game on there. And in fact, the capacity is going to be a limit anyway, because you've only got one megabyte of space on these, and those carts, um, the, the, the ocean ones in particular, a lot of them are 512k. Um, but you can get a lot of the older ones on here, as you can see, so um, let's just give Doc a comment, go, yeah, I'll show you. And, and that's how the menu comes up, you switch it on, you get that menu right from the start there. Not sure if I'm the right joystick port here. I might have to change it over. And you can load uh, the, you know, the, the, the program you use there to build the cartridge images. It'll accept prog files, PRGs. So, um, I think there's one or two I've tried and they work fine. You can move the port. Yeah, so if you've got access to the PRG file, uh, you can probably convert it. And the, the software out there to split other files as well, if you've got DSK, DSK files, you can split them. Uh, I think it's called Easy Split or something, and then fit them on a cartridge afterwards. It's a bit trial and error, I guess, to a certain degree. I'm oh, pleased with this, it was worth the 25 quid or whatever it was. 
The other downside to this Easy Flash version 1 over the Easy Flash 3 uh, is you can't load kernels, so I haven't found a way yet. In theory, you should be able to do it, I think, but um, the Easy Flash version 3 supports uh, kernel, which means you can stick Jiffy DOS or something on this Easy Flash 3 cards and uh, you know, have a facility to boot from that. But well, things like, uh, what's it called, Epic's Fast Load as well, you could use that, which would be pretty cool. I'm pleasantly surprised with this, I never played Donkey Kong on the C64 back in the day. Um, I don't know what Nintendo were thinking about, but they're just allowing one of their best titles to be published on the, on the platform. It plays pretty well. Just give something else a go. You'll use press the reset button on the button on the cart itself when you back to the menu. Uh, if you've got the right joystick and the right port, you can actually use it to navigate, but it's like I say, it, it, one of the things with C64 is you find you can swap in the uh, joystick over all the time. Um, just give this back one go. Again, another pretty sweet um, arcade port. <laughs> I wasn't surprised by this really as a port, I didn't expect it to be uh, as good as this. That's an example of a PRG. Um, I'm not sure whether you're familiar with this. It was, uh, I think, it was originally published on like iOS and Android and stuff on phones. Um, and the guy made a fortune from it. It was like really, really popular. Uh, but he did get a lot of criticism and hate uh, messages and things as well because it's so bloody hard. Um, and it's been ported to a lot of other systems since, including the C64. So it's uh, one of the latest games for the C64. This. And the idea is you just press the button, you know, just to flap and you've got to try and remain your eye, you know, make it remain at the, the, the right level between those little gaps there. Uh, and obviously get progressively different, more difficult way. But look if you get through three. It's so hard. I can understand why they've got a lot of criticism. I would prefer their difficulty option or something. Oh, it's just so hard. That's about the furthest I've got on this, I think. Okay, let's just give one more a go. Uh, it's interesting, there's a few, uh, I've not got them on here at the moment, but there's a few things that I didn't realise. For example, there's two versions of Star Wars for the Commodore 64. There's the version that was on the cart, it may well have been on tape as well, but then there's the, uh, you know, the original Atari Star Wars, in fact they're both copyright style of Atari I think but there's the newer version you know that was done by I think is it Domark um, and the same thing holds true of Double Dragon I was absolutely shocked I couldn't believe it there's two versions of Double Dragon there's a cartridge version of Double Dragon done by Ocean Software um, uh, it's not it's not great but it's, I would say it's better it's the better of the two the Virgin slash Mastertronic version the first one um, it wasn't particularly great you know it was lacking music lacking the graphics um, hardly any moves on it. Whereas the Ocean one's got really kick-ass music. It's got the, you know, sounds like very much like the original sound music. Um, and you've also got um, a lot more moves there, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's just give uh, the Zero a go. I used to play this uh, a long, long, long time ago. This was before um, I played uh, on an HC64. It was uh, we're actually we were house sitting for somebody. It's a long story, my dad was working for someone at the time and we were house sitting for him while he was away. And uh, I had a C64 and just hacked off this game. Uh, joystick's in the wrong port again. Something over, I think. Really basic, I think it's probably one of the release games for the C64, certainly one of the very, very early titles. Hence the thick looking graphics, you know, you could expect to see something like this on the Vic 20 era. 
Maybe it's even ported from the Victoria. No. Oh. The thing I liked about this, despite the simplicity of the graphics and sounds and things, it's the uh, variety in gameplay. It changes, you know, each little bit you do is totally different from the last. Uh, whatever, whatever. And it feels a little bit. Uh, it feels a little bit like. Uh, sort of. I don't know, some of those. It's like a wannabe Galaxian type. Uh, you know, one of those Namco type things. It's like. I don't know, it just feels a little bit like that. Despite the simplicity of the sound and graphics. This bit can be pretty hard. Of this. Oh. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.